In this last lesson for Unit 5, we're going to be looking at transforming polynomial functions. Now, we're going to begin with basic transformations. If we have a basic higher order polynomial, such as f of x equals x cubed, there are certain transformations we can do to it based on what we've learned in the past. As we've seen, we can take any function, we can translate it horizontally by subtracting an h value, I'm just going to put this to the n power because it will work for anything. We can stretch it vertically or compress it based on a front multiplier. We can reflect it across the x-axis if this front multiplier is negative. And we can translate it vertically by adding a k value to the end. So there's a lot of things that we can do from what we've seen in the past. For instance, if I want to take this basic polynomial function, f of x equals x cubed, and uh, let's say we want to move it left, 4, uh, stretch by a factor of 2, and move it down, uh, 6, we simply follow the transformations based on what we're working with. So once we go through the transformations and substitute in the values, we would come out with a g of x equation that is equal to 2 times x minus a negative 4, which would be x plus 4 cubed minus 6. That would put the center of our graph at negative 4, negative 6, which is here, and have it move at a vertical stretch factor of 2. So previously, from our center, we went up 1 and right 1, and down 1, left 1. We're going to stretch that vertical factor by 2 now. So from here, I'm going to go up 2 and right 1, and down 2 and left 1, which would put it right about there, and then connect this to make our new graph, and then our next spot would have been at 2, 8. So this one will be up 16 spots once we move over twice from here. So basic transformations can be done. And with a basic cubic function, we are guaranteed that we will have one real solution if we take away the multiplicity. It will be wherever it crosses that x-axis that will not change. Let's take a look at a different type of polynomial function that has some choices. In the graph here we're looking at the basic quartic function. This is f of x equals x to the fourth. You can see it has roughly the same appearance as a quadratic. It's a little bit flatter at the bottom and a little bit taller along the sides. The reason for that is that when we're between the absolute value of 0 and 1, and you raise that to the fourth power, those multipliers get a lot smaller. We know that 1 to the fourth power will be 1, but then say we take 2 to the fourth power, we're going to be all the way up at 16, whereas with a quadratic, 2 squared was simply up here at 4. So <clears throat> we can do the same types of transformations to this as what we were doing with our cubics, but we can't always guarantee one solution. Just like a parabola, this could just move up in the area where it doesn't cross the x-axis and give us no, no real solutions. So how do we build a function that has characteristics that we want? For instance, the question here, what is a quartic function with only two real zeros at negative 1 and 6? Well, if we have two real solutions, or two real zeros at negative 1 and 6, that means two of the factors, and we'll call this function f of x, two of my factors are going to be x plus 1 and x minus 6. That way, when I substitute in these zero values into my equations, or my terms, I will get zeros. The trick is, how do we get a fourth 
order or a quartic function that only has these two? Well, we need to put in a value for another function that doesn't have any real solutions. And we could use anything. That's why it says what is a quartic function. For instance, I know for a fact that x squared plus 1 has imaginary solutions only. So if I multiply these together, it will give me that function I'm looking for. So multiplying these out, I'm going to get x squared minus 5x minus 6 times x squared plus 1. Then doing my distribution strategically, I will come out with x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 5x squared minus 5x minus 6. And this graph would have the characteristics of only having two real zeros and is of the, a fourth degree polynomial, so it is quartic. Now, we can do this based on the fact that we know how certain graphs behave in certain functions. Primarily, our expertise now is in quadratics, so we're going to use those to our advantage as much as possible. Not all functions, however, once we get past the quadratic and we're dealing with polynomial functions, have the nice characteristics that we were able to manipulate all the time before. We've been talking a lot about families of functions, but there are what we consider to be subfamilies. The cubic function that you see pictured here, where we rise, have a noticeable fall, and then noticeable rise again, and we have our local extreme values, local minimum, local maximum, cannot be created by simply doing a series of transformations from any single cubic function, the parent function uh, a of x equals x cubed. Because this has other characteristics that are involved, if we take a look, we have zeros in this function located at negative 2, positive 1, and positive 4. So the way this function was created was I took f of x and set it equal to those zero terms. Then, using my distribution, I was able to multiply these through and arrived at the function that you see. So we can create different polynomials with characteristics we want, but it isn't always so cut and dry the way it was with quadratics. Now as we talk about the different types of polynomials that are out there, we are going to be looking primarily at the ones where we have a simple parent function such as a of x equals x cubed. Now any polynomial you see that has the characteristics of being written, uh, let's say p of x equals a x to the b is what's considered to be a power function. Now, if b is positive and a and b are non-zero real numbers, we get these monomial functions that we started out this unit talking about. And in unit two, we talked about direct variation. These power functions have characteristics similar to those direct variations, and the wording for their, that characteristic is similar. For instance, the power generated by a wind turbine varies directly with the cube of the wind speed. A certain model of turbine can generate 210 kilowatts of power from a 9 mile an hour wind. How much power would be generated from 20 mile an hour wind? Well, when we were working previously with direct variation, what we had were functions of the form y equals kx. We're going to take the same concept, but we're going to use the power involved. And it says in our problem, this is a cube. So, substituting in values, 210 kilowatts is generated by some unknown constant of variation times our wind speed cubed. Now, 
9 cubed is 729. So substituting in that value, we get 210 equals k times 729. Divided by 729, we have our constant of variation equaling that fraction, 210 out of 729. And simplifying the fraction gives us 70 out of 243. Now, we can use that in a more general formula in order to find the value for a 20 mile an hour wind. For instance, uh, we'll say the wind power, W of X, is equal to our fraction, 70 out of 243 X cubed. Now, substituting in 20 miles an hour, 20 cubed is 8,000. So we have 70 out of 243 times 8,000. And that gives us a wind speed, or sorry, a power generation of roughly 2,304 and a half kilowatts. So you can see that it grows quite quickly, but that's because we're cubing our wind speed. Uh, hurricanes technically start at a sustained wind speed of 75 miles an hour. So what would W of 75 give us? Well, we have 70 out of 243 times 75 cubed. And running this through computation would give us power generation of 121,527 and 8 tenths kilowatt of generation. Um, now, that sounds like a lot of power, and it is, but the problem is the structure of those wind turbines normally can't sustain withstand hurricane force winds for long periods of time. Otherwise, it'd be good to build a wind farm in the middle of the Atlantic down off the coast of Florida. So when we look at things, we can create equations for them. We can transform our functions based on different characteristics. And we can look for certain things to be happening as we do our work. So a lot of opportunities to show changes and alterations here we just have to be looking for those characteristics as we build them. So make sure you understand power functions and how to do basic transformations, and this will wrap up our unit on polynomial functions.